if you're an Etsy shop that's doing between like zero to a hundred sales, Let's get you to a thousand. Hey, my name is Jared Robinson and I'm the host of Grow My Etsy Shop podcast. And today we're gonna help new stores reach that thousand sale mark. If you are new to Etsy and looking to grow, this video is gonna help you see the path to how to do it. If you've been open for a while and you're not having any growth, well, guess what? This video is gonna help you as well. So one of the first things you need to do when you open or are stuck with your Etsy shop is that you need to do a step called product validation. What product validation allows you to understand is if people are actually interested in your product. I'm gonna jump through and show you some of this technique on how this can work. All right, so go ahead and log into Etsy from your desktop. This works way better from a desktop than it does from like a mobile or the app. From here, I want you to type in your main keyword. If you had a magic wand and can choose to be found under any keyword on Etsy, I want you to type that in, and I want you to see your competitor show up. If you're showing up, that's just because the search is curated. Don't think you're on the front page of Etsy. I want you to click on some of your competitors, but only those that look like they have lots of sales. Now, how do we know if someone has lots of sales? Based on their reviews. Their reviews are gonna roughly be around 10 to 20% of their sales. So if someone has a hundred reviews, we know they're about a thousand, around that thousand mark when it comes to their sales. So go ahead and click on those who have lots of reviews that seem like is the type of vibe that you like and I want you to right click it and open in new tab so that you can have a few tabs open all together. What you are doing is you are seeing the listings that Etsy is promoting. So Etsy likes these listings. These listings are doing well. We are now going to see why they're doing well. What is it that people like about this? And is this product that you, are, hopefully <laughs> the product you're clicking on is very similar to your product that you're gonna be able to kind of reverse engineer these listings to see if they're successful and if you are going to make money from this listing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into the actual listing itself and I want you to see how many reviews are left for that particular listing. Now, some stores have their sales on. So if you go into their shop, you can see the sales icon that's there. You can click that and see everyone's sales. But most turn those off. So you're gonna have to look at the reviews themselves and see of the reviews that are taking place, how many of those are connected to this particular listing. Now it's important to note that about 10 to 20% of reviews is the actual sale. So if a product has 10 reviews for it, that means it got about 100 sales of that product. And then you need to know how long that shop has been open and selling this product. You're gonna go ahead and click on the main store, scroll down and check to see how long that store has been open. This is gonna give you some ideas of like, yeah, people are buying this product. Once you have that idea, this is where software can come in handy. E-Rank, Marmalade, Sales Samurai, they all have trackers that you can keep tabs on of your competitors. So you can go ahead and drop that listing in, drop that store in, allow it to collect some stuff for you so that you know what's actually working. If you do this exercise and either A, you don't see anything on Etsy, or B, you see things on Etsy but nothing with a ton of sales, or C, you see something on Etsy or lots of things on Etsy and there's lots of sales, each one is gonna require you to do something different. So let's start with C. There's lots of them and lots of sales. You now need to see, is this an oversaturated market that is easily deliverable? Meaning, is there tons of competition because it's an easy thing to copy? If that's the case, you're coming into something that's gonna be saturated. Now, that doesn't mean you're dead in the water. That doesn't mean, oh, you better not do it. It just means you can't copy what other people are doing. You can't just be like, well, what's their pictures look like? What's their description? What's their keywords? Let me try that. You have to come in with a totally new perspective. Let's talk about number two. Number two is that you see your product, but there's not a lot of sales associated with your product. This is usually the trap that most people fall under is that they see the product on Etsy and they're like, oh look, I can sell and look at this store is so successful, but they don't realize that it's actually a different product that is giving them their sales. So you're bringing in a less popular product hoping to get the same amount of sales as that competitor and that just doesn't work. So if that's the case, I need you to reevaluate re what you're doing. I want you to sit down, I want you to see what they're doing and be able to say, okay, I can see the niche that they're serving, I can see that this particular product isn't right, let me try to adjust what I'm doing. Anytime you're starting a business, this is your mindset. It is not, I'm going to create something that people love and people are gonna buy it from me. 
it needs to be what is it that people love and allow me to create it for them. If you fell into number one or A, which is that you didn't see your product at all, this is gonna require you to do some outside research. You can use Google Keyword Planner to see is there a search for what you're doing. You can search Pinterest and all that kind of stuff. And the reason you're gonna do this is that Etsy is a search engine, which means that your products only show up when someone searches for you. So you may have an excellent product, but if no one knows that your product exists, they're not gonna search for it. And if they don't search for it, well then a lot of that be traffic is gonna to need to fall on you instead of on Etsy. And then I need to evaluate, is Etsy's fees worth me bringing all my own traffic to Etsy? Now for the sake of this video, let's just say that you went through and you saw that, yep, my product is there, people are buying my product, they're leaving reviews for this product. I have a good product, it's just not being found. My competitors are beating me to the punch, okay? If this is you, this is what I don't want you to do, which is super tempting to do. Copy your competitors. I want you to imagine this, and this is from a book called The Purple Cow, but if you were to drive in and look at a field of cows, you don't really draw your eye to a particular cow. Well, that's what happens when you're in this search engine without anything that stands you out. If you're just copying your competitors, you just become a watered-down version of your competitor. And when you're a watered-down version of your competitor, it becomes a price bid. You're entering a price bid. Who can, who's willing to give up the, the most amount of money to get a customer? And you don't really want to enter into a field like that. So what you can do instead is present yourself as a better version. This takes business mind. You have to be able to say, what makes me different? How can I be better? So when we look at our competitors, instead of saying, oh, I really like that, I'm going to copy that. Oh, I really like that, I'm going to copy that. I want you to say, how can I do this better? How can I get this? And if you go through this and say, I can't, move on. I'm telling you right now, it won't be worth the effort that you're going to put into Etsy because you're just going to be always behind someone else. But if you can carve your own niche of something that makes you better, you can see it. Oh man, I wish they did it this way instead of that way. And you do it that way, now you have something. You have a marketing principle that you can push off of and you can convince buyers when they come to your listing, hey, don't go this direction. Go this direction, here. And so now when they have a sea of white cows, all of a sudden this purple cow starts to show up and their eye is drawn to that. And they can understand that they can, they can go with the lesser product and not get what the premium of what you're offering them. That's what they'd be giving up. And if you can convince them of that, you're on the right path to really get to that thousand sale mark. Okay, so let's say that you've done your product validation. It checks out. You know what you're gonna do better than your competition and you're starting to do it. You are now entering the eyeball phase of Etsy. This means it is your job to bring as much eyeballs as you can because when you are confident that your product will convert and you have even some data, that it will convert, meaning people are starting to buy from you. It becomes the eyeball game. How many, if I just need to get a certain amount of eyes to my listing to get it to convert. This means that you need to invest yourself into either organic traffic, so creating content, getting your name out there, hanging flyers on people's doors. I don't care how you do it, but you're gonna organically try to get more into your store or you can pay for it. So you can run Etsy ads, and start to get a boost to what you're doing. You can run social media ads and get a boost to what you're doing, but you're gonna to try to drive in traffic to what you're doing because Etsy needs data that your product is selling and that there's a particular type of person who's interested in it. Keep in mind, when someone buys your product, especially Streamline, people are buying consistently, Etsy gets learned something. They're like, oh, the people like this product. The pictures must be great because people are buying it. When people start leaving good reviews, they're like, oh, people love the product, they're a good seller and the, it's priced right. People are willing are finding that the money they're spending is value and that's what Etsy cares about. So once you start getting that going, you can start to build this up and what I see in the accounts that I work in is that we'll be spending money on ads and then as we, and like their organic looks like this and their ad traffic looks like this and then as we continue, their ad dollars stay the same but the organic starts to go, 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 go and it ends up going past and that's when we start to lower back on our budget or we spread it out to a different uh, item at that time and we allow that organic to start to work for us. Hopefully you found value in this video. Hopefully this makes sense. If we're at that thousand or not at that thousand yet, we need to dive into not what's wrong with me, what's wrong with Etsy, but am I delivering a product that people actually want and are searching for? And am I the best version 
of that product. And if you have that mindset, you can get yourself to that 1,000 and beyond mark. If you want some more information on how to do this, I have some videos on my website for sale. You can go in there, you can buy these videos, they're pretty cheap. They're just gonna walk you through some shops, how I do it, so that you can learn how to validate products. What this is also super helpful for is when you're creating a new niche in your store. So let's say you've been selling dish rags for a long time and you're like, okay, I wanna start introducing new products. This is going to help you learn how to do that so that you're not spinning, spinning in the mud trying to find the right products. So if you're interested in that, you can go to growmyetsyshop.com or just click the link in the description and that can hook you up there. Until next time, see ya.